shakalaka, using this one buying indicator, your Bitcoin gains would have skyrocketed over the past few years, plus the largest financial seizure by the Department of Justice ever, the top altcoins to buy today, and exactly what's going on with Bitcoin. You'll definitely want to stay tuned. What's up everyone, Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's video, Bitcoin fear and greed in neutral. We are out of fear. This is the first time that this has happened since September, October of last year. It's looking like it's turning around. Before we get into it, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Also come join us over on Twitter at the Crypto Love because today we are covering a lot of different stuff. We're taking a look at the one indicator you need to know if you want to know when to buy Bitcoin at the best times. We're taking a look at the largest financial seizure by the Department of Justice, also the top altcoins today, and what's going on with Bitcoin. But before we do, let's get into it. Today, guys, overall market down almost 2%. Bitcoin at 43,438, Ethereum at 3081, BNB at 410, XRP at 85 cents, Cardano at 116, Solana at 111, Terra Luna at 56, and Avalanche at $86. You'll notice here that Avalanche, Polkadot, and Dogecoin just keep flipping each other back and forth. It's a different one in tenth every single day. And for those of you who are looking for the top altcoins today, check out token metrics. If you look at the daily indices, you'll get on a regular basis the coins that outperform the market. There is a discounted link down in the description. The top coins today on KuCoin, not on all markets, but on KuCoin because it has low trading fees and generally does better than a lot of the other exchanges in terms of returns. Top coins today would be Hydra, Telos, Decentraland, Luxo token, and FTX token. So check those out for yourself and check out token metrics down below. Now, the Department of Justice just had their largest seizure, $3.6 billion Bitcoin bust. And this is what it looked like. Now, I think this is probably a Photoshop picture. But that's pretty funny because normally they have like boatloads of dollar bills and gold and all this stuff and cocaine in front of them. This time it's just a teeny little ledger. So what happened? The Department of Justice sees $3.6 billion in crypto and arrests two in connection with the 3016 Bitfinex hack. So basically since 2016 hack, individuals connected with the stolen coins have periodi periodically moved small amounts of Bitcoin in separate transactions, leaving the bulk of the funds untouched. The Department of Justice reported it had traced 25,000 Bitcoin of these transferred funds to financial accounts controlled by Liechtenstein and Morgan. Special agents were then able to gain access and seize more than 94,000 Bitcoin worth $3.6 million at the time from Morgan and Liechtenstein after a search warrant allowed them to view vials containing private keys to the wallets. Now today's arrest and the department is the department's largest financial seizure ever show that cryptocurrency is not a safe haven cr for criminals. At least Bitcoin is not. Potentially Monero, some of these other ones might be temporarily, but Bitcoin definitely is not. So in a futile effort to maintain digital anonymy, the defendants laundered stolen funds through a labyrinth of cryptocurrency transactions. Thanks to the meticulous work of law enforcement, the department once again showed how it can and will follow the money no matter what form it takes. And we can see it bit more here from this from David Puel. He says, the Bitfinex hack seizure is a great example of how on-chain transparency provided useful information into the public domain about a week ago. So on January 31st, several on-chain metrics spiked in a seemingly typical fashion. You can see on Glassnode, we saw these movements were happening. At the time, we saw major concentrations of the hack coins into a single address. Since they had been ID'd for years, link to the current BEC32 address is there. And you can see Whale Alert was saying, hey, large amounts of funds transferred. This was enough information for public analysts concluded that the coins were moved to a mirror to were wallet concentration as opposed to immediate economic behavior. And then furthermore, on top of that, the coin movement saw no privacy or mixing behavior, which one would expect from addresses of hacked funds, conclusive to some that the seizure may have taken effect. Finn, this is just one more example of how Bitcoin's public ledger open to all allows for observance to see the history of the ledger unfolding live. So that is probably the biggest news article for today. But if you want to know how to make more Bitcoin, stack more sats, make more money, this one trading strategy could make you a boatload, a boatload of money. So this is from TechDev. So he was actually replying to Peter Schiff, 
who was saying that, hey, uh, back here on January 24th, he was saying Bitcoin is merely a collectible digital token, but one Bitcoin is just an arbitrary quantity of Satoshis with 2.1 quadrillion sats and 8 billion people in the world. That's enough sats for each one to own 262,500. Since each of the sats is identical, a Satoshi collection is worthless. Now, if you notice, Peter Schiff tweeted that pretty much at the bottom, right around $34,000. Now, if we go look back at his previous tweets where he's talking poorly about Bitcoin. How about at the COVID bottom? Price was $3,800. He says, Bitcoin is getting ready for another 50% drop. Did it drop? No, didn't. Uh, how about this one back when it was 3500 He said, don't make the mistake of thinking that buying Bitcoin below 3800 is a bargain just because the current price is better than 80% below its record high. Bitcoin could easily drop another 80% from here, and at $750, it would still be expensive. So he was wrong there. He was wrong, wrong, wrong. So basically... If you just counter trade Peter Schiff's tweets, you're probably going to do very, very well buying Bitcoin because he likes to kick people when they're down because, you know, he's a gold bug and he's hurting because gold isn't as good as digital gold anymore, which goes on. This is very similar to something that Jacob Canfield did back in 2018 where he analyzed CNBC tweets. And basically, if you would counter trade the CNBC tweets, it was an insanely accurate 95% accuracy for Bitcoin gains. So if they had a bullish tweet and you sold, you would sell the top. If they had a bearish tweet and you bought, you would buy pretty much the bottom. Great indicator there. So while be greedy while those are fearful and fearful while those are greedy. Great indication of how to play cryptocurrency. Now, what's going on with Bitcoin today? As we see, Bitcoin has actually broke this downtrend of resistance. So it is likely that this trend is real. Okay, we are going up. This isn't a trap anymore. We've broken it. Maybe we'll come back down and bounce off of it. But it appears as though this trend is real. We do have some very serious resistance to consider between the 48 and $58,000 area because that's just where a lot of money changed hands over the past few years. But a couple of things I want you to take a look at. So each time that Bitcoin breaks the RSI right here, we have these yellow dotted lines. Now, if we just take a bar pattern from each of these and we take a look at the previous bar pattern. So let's say that Bitcoin just did what it did the previous time. Well, if that were to happen, guess what? That would put Bitcoin up here, the upper bands, right around $75,000 by May. But that's like if what happens the last time happened. But we may be seeing better. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at the bar pattern before that, and we see, whoops, that's not a bar pattern. This is a bar pattern. If we take a look at bar pattern before that and see what Bitcoin could potentially do, we'll change the color on this just so you can see it a little bit more. Well, if we do that and shift that over here, Oh my goodness, we're going to have to scroll up so you can actually see what Bitcoin could potentially do. We will zoom back out, and guess what? That could blow us out of the current trend that we have been in into new highs, roughly around $200,000 by August. So 2022 is looking like a very, very interesting year. This is echoing what a lot of traders are saying, like this guy here, 888Velvet. He predicted the bull run, he also predicted the $33,000 bottom. And he's saying, hey, guess what? It is lining up once again for alt season where things are about to go bananas starting in Q2 of 2022. So be prepared. Find your altcoin positions now by using projects like token metrics so that you can make an absolute killing. And this, furthermore, TechDev uh, retweeted this one from Blake. Bitcoin chart combining four different models to chart the tops. And this combines a whole bunch of different things together. Fib-based log regression bands, trend-based Fib extensions, local Fib retracements, and macro Fib retracements. And when he combines it all together to say where we're going right now, take a look at this. We are headed to the somewhere between $130,000 and $260,000 area for Bitcoin and likely to be more explosive for altcoins. So guys, if you enjoyed that video, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Also check out Token Metrics that uses artificial intelligence, machine learning, and over 80 different indicators to help pick out the best altcoins ever. And I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Love you. Peace.